I'm Ray, G4NSJ. SMA, plugs and fittings and sockets and couplers and things. You can get, hang on, let me show you where well, you've seen this anyway. SMA to whatever couplers, okay? But I thought, I'm fed up with doing that. I've got all these huge couplers everywhere. I thought, how do I put one of these on myself? Now, before I go any further, this video is for beginners, okay? A lot of you professional guys out there, you'll be saying, oh, that's not the way you do it. Oh, no, no, no. This is my first attempt at crimping on SMA uh, bits and pieces onto RG316 coax. My first attempt. And the reason for this video, the reason I'm showing the beginners, your newcomers out there, is because a lot of people will look at that and say, oh, no, I can't crimp that. Oh, no way, no, I'll buy a made-up lead. Well, you know, have a go. Um, have a go. I, I, I think this is the trouble these days. Everything is bought, isn't it? Everything, you, whatever you want, you go and buy a black box and you're on the air. You buy an aerial and put it up. Well, why not make your own aerial? So why not have a right old go at, like I did and completely bodge up putting a plug on a bit of coax? Now, you, you, you can see, anyway, in this video, you'll see my bodge, my attempt at doing a, a decent job, which didn't quite work out. I bought a crimping tool. <laughs> Look at that. It's uh, rather good. You've got four sets of jaws all together, three in there and one there, four sets. Some of these were 60 pounds and more. Others were like 12 pounds. I thought, well, I don't know. I went for 30 quid. 30 quid, you get in total four sets of jaws, pretty well built, quite nice. Bad workman always blames his tools. <laughs> So I was told when I was an apprentice back in the radio and TV workshop. Anyway, so I'm not going to blame this. The first plug I went to put on, the little inner pin, okay, I poked the wire in it and this, right, and I cut the pin in half. Oh, I don't know whether you can buy spare pins. You know the little, the little pin in there I'm talking about. So the second pin, I thought, right, let's get this right. Let's get the, the right size. The second pin, cut it off. Well, no, it didn't cut it off, to be honest. It flattened it. I then thought, right, this is, I'm going to solder it. So I soldered it on. And here, here are a few pictures to be looking at in the meantime. I soldered the centre pin on. Um, what I should have done was poke the wire in the middle of the hole, then do a little solder job. Of course, with the solder, it then wouldn't fit in the, you know, the PTFE, the hole. So I had to file down the solder, or rather a palaver, but you can see the photos there. Um, I did it. I put the plug on, as you see at the end on the end photo. I actually did it. But uh, if you're going to buy one of these crimping tools, just you really you want a few plugs to practice on. Uh, I think getting it right first time is going to be pretty. Uh, well, you won't. <laughs> Basically, you won't get it right first time. I ended up putting the bit of heat shrink sleeving over it. I've got a few whiskers in that last photo, a few whiskers just poking out that I'm going to trim off. But basically I did it. I put the plug on. I used this to crimp the outer, which is rather good. You see it in the photos. Don't forget to put the, the bit of sleeving on. Then that outer sleeve, that metal sleeve that you're going to crush. Uh, then put your pin on poke the pin into the, you know, into the, the plug itself and then crimp the outside. You, you see that all from all the photos. There are, it's very bright today, it's huge sunshine and blue sky, unusual this time of year. There are these plugs that you can buy with a, what they call a solder window. It's a little hole. Sorry about the radio in the background. It's a little hole where you can solder through to the centre pin. I think in future what I'm going to do is put the centre pin on the, you know, uh, the inner of the coax into the centre pin and then solder that. I've got a very small soldering iron, just a little blob of solder on that. Be, be better than crimping it. That's what I'm going to try and do. I get, surely you can get these pins separately. I could do with like, you know, a bag of a hundred. <laughs> yeah. yeah, crush, that's no good. Crush, that's no good. Oh, look, that one worked. <laughs> I just thought, though, as I said, I mean, that's a, an SMA uh, female to SO2 
239 and I've got SMA female to PL259 but they're all huge big connectors I wanted to do a professional job like that well I didn't quite do a professional job but uh, it works it's on the uh, SDR the software defined radio right now move on to phono plugs now you're going to say why do you want to put a phono plug onto uh, a piece of RG316 well that's for that aerial box I made you know the aerial switch over did you see the video with that do you see that box I made for aerial switching an aerial to my different uh, shortwave receivers sorry about the blurred bits in this but have a look at this right here is the the coax what I've done I've just stripped off the outer here you want a very sharp pair of little pair of cutters like that get the outer stripped off oh before you do anything don't forget to put the outer of the phono plug the body on there when you strip this off you've got to make sure that there's going to be enough if we fold that back there look over the I'll just fold that outer back over there because that's going to go in there all right so we've got to make sure that we've got enough of the inner to go into here now on this particular type of plug there's no hole at the end so it's just got to go in in there and solder if you can see in that bit there okay so let's cut the inner now that's it so that's how it's going to be can you see that clearly so I'm just going to strip the inner off right I've stripped that can you see that what I've done there I'm going to tin that like that now the advantage of this coax is this doesn't melt the insulation doesn't melt all right now what I'm going to do here on the plug itself so I'll show you I'm just going to just put a little bit of solder in there like that can you see that looks a bit of a mess that doesn't matter I hope you can see this clearly I'm just going to tin that little inner bit there all right a little bit of solder on that then a bit difficult with the camera um, to show you what I'm doing put the inner in there like that it's very difficult to show you on the camera what I'm doing here because I think also it's blurred is that blurred that's if I move the camera back a bit it'll be all right now we're going to just close this just crimp around that that braid all right like that then solder here now remember we put solder on the inside just see a little bit of the sleeve the outer there just do that that would have soldered the joint inside let that cool down then the little insulating sleeve there look which goes on then the outer and there's the plug that was so difficult with the I've got the camera here and I'm working around the other side of the camera. Perhaps I should have put the camera there. It looked like a right bod though, that plug. But uh, what I forgot to say was just tint you know, with the braid, where you push the braid back and over the out of the coax, just put a little bit of solder on there. So a bit like plumbing, you know, when you put the uh, two together, crimp the outside, just warm that up, heat that up, and the solder inside will just flow nicely. I read somewhere, point oh. Uh, where are we? 1.09 millimeters for the pin and 5.4 millimeters for the outer for the crimping well i don't know perhaps i got it wrong i forget what size i, I thought i used that size but it cut the pin in half that's just me um th this if you're going to get a crimping tool it also apparently it'll do crimp on bnc's and pl259s it, it does all sorts of crimping uh, also terminals you know like um for the end of a bit of wire you can crimp a terminal on there or you know a spade thing or whatever i've got a load somewhere uh so you know it's it's quite a, a versatile tool i'm glad i bought it i mean when i first cut the pin in half and crushed the second one i thought i don't know 30 pounds 
uh, my old mate Nick, if you're watching, hello Nick. He said, no, 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 buy, you know, buy the leads ready made up. The only thing is, is the length of the leads. Uh, you know, I want, for example, I think from the my switchover box to the SDR, I think it was, what was it? Just under two, about one and a half metres. Well, these made up, it's sort of half a metre, one metre, two metres. And also I thought, well, you know, why should I pay someone else to do this when I can do a really good professional job myself? which I've since discovered I can't. <laughs> I hope you found the video useful. I doubt that very much, but still in mind. I do like to encourage people to have a go. Back in the 60s, when I was in my teens, everyone did their own thing. The only gear available, there was, there was Heathkit stuff around. The only gear available really to people that weren't loaded was army surplus stuff. You, know, you get an old a bit of army surplus gear, transmitter receiver you've got to build a power supply you've got to do stuff to it you've got to change stuff work on it you know um and get it going but these days it's just a shame that everything as i said earlier everything is bought you know you want a two meter 70 cents radio you buy one 100 quid from china and it's absolutely brilliant whereas in the old days we build stuff but there we are and also of course make up leads which these days, people don't even do that. Anyway, there we go. I had to go at making up a lead. It's over there on the SDR box and it works. It's not, not brilliant, but it works. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time. Hope you learned how not to crimp on a uh, SMA plug. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.